let's look at using standard deviation to compare the spread of distributions. So let's suppose you're playing a game like D&D, for instance, and there's an attack um, that does 2d8 plus 2 damage, and we want to compare that to one that does 2d10 to one that does 1d20. So I have here the probability models. So the amount of damage it does, those I should call that damage, because it's a sum, but not really for that one. Um, so then we have the probability for each of these. This one was in the previous video. This one, you can make a table of 10 by 10 and come up with this. You get these triangular probabilities. They start at 1 over 100, go up to 10 over 100, and back down to 1 over 100. Um, 1d20, it would just one die, that's a uniform distribution. So it's just 5% for every number, 5%, because that's 1 divided by 20. So I calculated the expected value for each of these. 2d8 plus 2, the expected value is 11. So on average, that attack would do 11 damage. But it's the exact same thing for 2d10. It does an average of 11. 1d20 is 10 and a half, so it's different, but not really very much different. So then we can compare the standard deviation, though. So to review how to do that, what you do is you start for each x value. You take your x value, subtract your mean, in this case 11, square that result, multiply by the probability. And you do that, you get some decimal number, doesn't really mean a lot in this case, and you can copy that down. So I already did that over here, but you see it's the same thing. x minus 11 squared times the probability. Here it's x minus 10 and a half squared times the probability. And then when you do that, you can add all those up. So the variance is if you add up this whole column. Here I got a variance of 10 and a half, which is just a coincidence with that other number 10 and a half appearing. Uh, for this, I added up and I get 16 and a half. And for this one, I added up and I get a total of 33.25. So variance, if you think about that, also is a measure of spread. This one's the lowest, that one's medium, and that one's the highest. Uh, and then we can just go ahead and square root that number. And I'll just go ahead and round it to like eh, two decimal places. Seems fine for this. So in terms of standard deviation, you could say this attack does an average of 11 damage with a standard deviation of 3.24 points of damage. This one, same average, a little more spread to it, though which makes sense because this one, that plus two added in, is not random at all. The only randomness is coming from the 2d8, whereas this one, the entire thing is determined randomly. And with the 1d20, the standard deviation ends up even bigger, which should also make sense because you've got a lot more tail probability here. Um, you don't necessarily need standard deviation for this. You can see there's a lot more probability in the center for this one. 11, 12, 11%, and this one, you know, all the middle ones are around 8 to 10, whereas these are all 5%. But that gives you an idea of standard deviation telling you how spread out the values are, which is kind of a big deal in gaming because you want some idea of what the average is, but you want some idea of what is the sort of surprise factor from like unexpected results. How close are you going to be to some sort of centralized um, damage in this case, and how much spreads are going to be?